Life can be challenging for a rock star, and throughout history, the rock world has had its moments of tragic loss, many of which were sudden, shocking, and made headlines worldwide. The suddenness of many of these had many people scratching their heads and looking for answers. Some of these rock stars left clues that helped explain what happened at the time of their deaths. A few of these clues made sense of the whole situation, while others offer more questions than answers, which have led to theories regarding these deaths. So what were the notable things found at the death scenes of some famous rock stars? Stay tuned as we explore the clues left behind some of rock's most well-known icons that may or may not have shed light on the events that led to their passing. Kurt Cobain As far as the rock world goes, no other death in recent memory impacted the scene more than Kurt Cobain's in 1994. At the time of his passing, grunge was the hottest thing going on, and Nirvana was the biggest band in the world. But worldwide recognition wasn't enough to save Kurt from the inner demons that had plagued him for a long time. Kurt wrestled with heroin abuse and depression for most of his life, and when these combined with his struggle to handle worldwide fame, things fell apart tragically. On April 8, 1994, an electrician discovered the body of Kurt Cobain in his home in Seattle. Apart from some blood coming out of Kurt's ear, the electrician initially thought he was sleeping until he noticed a shotgun pointed at the musician's chin. A note was also found at the scene, where Kurt reveals that he hadn't felt excited to write or create music for a long time. Near the end of the note, Kurt urged his wife Courtney Love to keep going for their daughter Frances Bean, believing her life would be better without him. The news of Kurt's death sent shockwaves globally, especially because he was the frontman of the world's biggest musical act at the time. Two decades after his death, police released images to counter murder theories. These images revealed what was found at the scene of his death, including the shotgun he used, drug paraphernalia, sunglasses, a hat, and the suicide note, which was found in the flower pot with a pen stuck through it. Michael Jackson If Kurt Cobain's death was the most talked about tragedy in the rock world, Michael Jackson's death in 2009 was the biggest shocker in all of entertainment, period. At the time, the King of Pop was gearing up for a series of farewell concerts billed as This Is It. The concerts were set to take place from July 2009 to March 2010, with the first 10 shows taking place at London's O2 Arena before the tour went global. The announcement led to record-breaking ticket sales and prompted organizers to increase the O2 shows from 10 to 50. The preparations for the tour had a physical toll on Jackson's body, leading to the pop star experiencing insomnia and affecting his performances. His doctor, Conrad Murray, prescribed him propofol to help him sleep. On June 25, 2009, Jackson was found unresponsive by Murray in his room. Paramedics came in to bring him to the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center while they tried to revive him. However, they were unsuccessful, and Jackson was pronounced dead later that day. At the scene of his death were bottles of propofol and benzodiazepine. The combination of these substances led to cardiac arrest which took the singer's life. For prescribing a deadly combination of these substances, the courts found Dr. Murray guilty of involuntary manslaughter in November 2011, two years after Jackson's death. Elvis Presley Undoubtedly one of the most popular figures in American pop culture, the king of rock and roll Elvis Presley was a global phenomenon. Guinness World Records recognizes Presley as the best-selling solo musical artist of all time, with 500 million copies of his records having been sold worldwide. He also holds the record for the most gold and platinum albums, most albums that charted on the Billboard 200, most number one albums and singles on the UK charts. However, in his later years, Presley developed a dangerous drug addiction. On August 16, 1977, Presley's then fiance Ginger Alden, found him unconscious in the bathroom of his Graceland mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. Paramedics arrived soon after and tried to revive him, but their attempts failed. Presley was pronounced dead at the nearby Baptist Memorial Hospital that afternoon. The paramedics found an empty bottle of painkillers and a vial of the tanning drug Trisorolin. Chris Cornell the death of grunge icon Chris Cornell is one of the most sudden tragedies in recent rock history. At the time of his death, Cornell's band Soundgarden, one of the most popular grunge bands in the 90s, was in the middle of a tour after being on hiatus for years. On May 17, 2017, after a performance at the Fox Theater in Detroit, Cornell retreated to his hotel room at the MGM Grand. A quarter after midnight, his bodyguard discovered his body in his room with a resistance band wrapped around his neck. 
At 1.30 a.m., he was pronounced dead. The authorities found prednisone, omeprazole, and lorazepam in his room. Coroners ruled out that drugs did not contribute to Cornell's death, as the substances in his body at the time of his death were in therapeutic doses and were prescribed to him. Amy Winehouse Amy Winehouse was one of the most acclaimed singers of her generation. Her 2006 album, Back to Black, is one of the best-selling albums in UK history. The record put her on the map and marked her rise as one of the most talented singers of the new millennium. However, underneath her voice was an addiction to illegal substances that she struggled with. On July 23, 2011, Winehouse died at her home in Camden, London. According to her bodyguard, the singer went to bed at around 2 a.m. the night before. The following day at about 3 p.m., she was discovered by her bodyguard still in bed in the same position and having no pulse. He immediately called the paramedics, who pronounced her dead at the scene. Authorities stated the official cause of her death was accidental alcohol poisoning. They found a laptop beside her body where she had been watching her live performances the night before and one small and two large bottles of vodka on the floor. According to her brother Alex, the singer also had bulimia, which made things worse and likely contributed to her untimely death. Janis Joplin Janis Joplin personified counterculture and rock and roll during the 60s with her iconic voice and unique stage presence. However, like many artists during that time, the singer struggled with substance abuse issues, particularly heroin. On the night of October 4, 1970, her road manager and friend, John Byrne Cook, found Joplin lying in her hotel room dead. Joplin had a handful of cash in one hand and a cigarette box in the other. Autopsy reports revealed that Joplin died from a heroin overdose. The 1983 book Coroner by Joseph Demona and Los Angeles County Coroner Thomas Noguchi claims that evidence was removed from the scene by a friend of Joplin's, only to put the evidence back after realizing that an autopsy would reveal Joplin's use of heroin anyway. Keith Relf Keith Relf was the frontman for the Yardbirds, a band responsible for launching the careers of three legendary guitarists, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Jeff Beck. Despite fronting the Yardbirds, Relf's career didn't take off as much as the three guitarists after the band dissolved. Still, Relf continued pursuing music and formed several groups, most notably the progressive rock band Renaissance, which also included his sister Jane Relf. Unfortunately, Ralph's career and life was cut short in 1976. While playing guitar at his basement, he accidentally stepped on a gas pipe and was electrocuted. His young son later found his body and the guitar he was playing. Ralph suffered from emphysema and asthma and regularly took medications to treat them, which may have prevented him from surviving the electric shock. Dead Black metal, especially Norwegian black metal, is probably the most extreme subgenre of metal, rock, or just music in general. One of the most infamous events that proves this is the death of Mayhem frontman, Dead. Even during his lifetime, Dead was a very strange person. He was noted for his morbid antics and dark personality. He carried dead birds on stage and kept them under his bed, wore shirts announcing funeral dates, and even cut himself during performances. As years passed, his mental state worsened, and even his peers in the black metal scene thought he was taking things too far. Everything culminated on April 8, 1991, when Dead took his own life while alone in the house he shared with Mayhem bandmates Euronymous and Hellhammer. Euronymous found his body in the house, along with the knife and shotgun he used in a suicide note. To add to the graphic nature of these events, Euronymous photographed the corpse and used the photo as the cover of Mayhem's bootleg live album, The Dawn of the Black Hearts. Cass Elliot Cass Elliot of the Mama and the Papas was beloved for her unique and powerful voice. But back in the 60s, body positivity and acceptance wasn't as strong advocacy as it is today, and fat shaming was common. The public's fat phobic views got to Mama Cass, and despite her singing talent, she found it hard to escape criticisms about her weight. As a result, she began a radical diet where she would fast four days a week. This helped her shed a significant amount of weight, but also resulted in her being frequently hospitalized. On July 29, 1974, Elliot died in her sleep. An autopsy revealed that the singer died due to heart failure, possibly exacerbated by her extreme diet and the complications that came with it. Authorities reported finding an unfinished ham sandwich at the room where Mama Cass died. This launched a fatphobic urban legend that the singer choked to death while eating the said sandwich, a below-the-belt rumor that poked fun at Elliot's efforts to slim down and completely ignored her musical contributions. Chester Bennington 
Linkin Park became one of the most popular bands at the peak of the new metal wave in the early 2000s, and the powerful voice of Chester Bennington was a key component to their success. Despite the fame, the vocalist struggled with depression and substance issues throughout his life. On July 20, 2017, Chester was found dead in his California home. The news of his sudden passing sent fans worldwide into a frenzy, especially when it was revealed that the singer had taken his own life. Authorities found coins and a plane ticket in his pockets at the time of his death. Additionally, a journal believed to be the singer's biography was found in the room, along with bottles of alcohol, an iPhone, and a prescription for Zolpidem. Chester's death, along with many others on this list, proves that the pressure that comes with being a rock star can be too much for some people. To be idolized by millions of fans looks like a dream life on the outside, but sometimes it's just not enough to defeat those inner demons.